So as you can see behind me, HVAC is going in, electrical and plumbing are happening, all the guts of the building are getting done. So now is the time where I've got to finalize where all the plumbing, electrical and appliances are going so they can wire everything while it's opened up for inspection. And in order to do that, I've got to finalize my kitchen design now. So over the past week, I've taken the time, modeled up my dream kitchen here, and I thought it'd be a lot of fun for us to go through that process, check it out, and get excited about what's to come. And at the end, I know you guys are gonna ask for it, so we will be talking a bit about the budget. But before we get into all that, I've got kitchen demo footage from all the way back in May when my buddy Julian was helping me demo the whole place. And as you may recall, there was actually a structure here with kind of a bar built in it was old, nasty, needed to be torn out. So without further ado, let's dive into that smash and bash goodness. post here so that's just a bunch of two by fours and absolutely the easiest way to take that down is just going to be use a reciprocating saw slice right through it take it out but for some reason Julian wants to use a sledgehammer and he's been a big help so I, I'm gonna I'm gonna let him try right. I think you missed a column shut up Every tool is a hammer. Hot, sweaty, but we're gonna call it a day. Job well done getting this, uh, this kitchen down. First thing we gotta do today is tear down this big wall behind me, which is between where the kitchen and master bath will go. And you guys have seen me tear down a bunch of walls and time lapses and yada yada at this point. So we're gonna do this one the easy way. We got some good news and some bad news when we open up this wall. First, the good news, obviously, we got brick. brick. Hopefully we can keep some of that in the new room design. The bad news is that some of the brick is absolutely crumbling and falling apart right above this door here. Now, I'm no masonry guy, but it looks like there could be some structural integrity there, which means we need to rip out the brick, maybe put a steel beam across there, or just fill it in with new brick, which is expensive, I'm gonna guess you know, over a thousand, maybe 2000 bucks to do something like that. Ah. Demo is done. I got a blank slate behind me to work with. Now it's time to design my dream kitchen. But first, a quick word from this video sponsor, Simply Safe. So you guys have seen a bunch of videos where I've been working with Simply Safe and know I'm a huge fan of their comprehensive home security system. And right now, Simply Safe is putting on some amazing holiday sales. I'll touch on those in a minute. But first, I'm really excited to announce that I'm partnering with Simply Safe to give one of my viewers a complete Simply Safe home security system that's going to include the base station, the keypad, the Simply Cam, a video doorbell, a smart lock, and like 14 other sensors and devices that all work together seamlessly and are connected to Simply Safe's award winning 24 7 monitoring service. To enter the contest, you only need to do two things. One, include the word Simply Safe in a comment in this video, and two, Go to the pinned comment and follow the instructions there to submit your official entry. 
I'm super stoked that Simply Safe is going to give one of my viewers the chance to enjoy the same security that I trust to protect this building. On that note, I've had a chance to test the system in a way because I had some subcontractors accidentally set off the alarm when they came in the other day. First, I got a notification on my phone immediately that the alarm had been tripped. And within about 15 seconds, I got a call from Simply Safe's monitoring service asking if they should get the police on the road. Fortunately, this was just the contractors and not a burglar, but I do sleep a lot more soundly at night knowing that I have that level of protection. Now, I wish that all of you could get a Simply Safe system for free, but only one person gets it. For the rest of you, head over to simplysafe.com slash industrial and check out their holiday sales. As of the day this is publishing, there's a sale for 40% off any Simply Safe system plus a free Simply Cam that's usually 99 bucks. This is a great deal and typically burglaries do go up during the holidays, so it's a great time to secure your home. Plus, if you buy through simplysafe.com slash industrial, you'll be supporting this channel and I greatly appreciate that. So thanks to Simply Safe for supporting this channel and making 2020 suck just a little bit less. Now, let's go design my dream kitchen. Designing a kitchen is a huge task. There's a lot that goes into it. It can be kind of overwhelming. You got appliances, you got all the HVAC electrical restrictions of the building, color palette, design styles, layouts, so much. So where do we begin? I started simple, picking out the color palette and the materials. So all I did was go to Pinterest, type in kitchen and a brick and timber loft, and then I started just marking down pictures of kitchens I liked until I started to see some patterns emerge. So as you're looking at these, you'll see sort of commonalities running between them. First big decision I made was the cabinets. And I've got nothing against white kitchens. I think they look awesome, but we are gonna buck that trend. We're going dark, baby. We're gonna go with matte black or gray, maybe a dark charcoal gray, something like that. I haven't picked out the exact material yet, but definitely on the darker side. So the second big material decision is the countertops. And this might not be as apparent looking at my inspo picks, but for those of you that have been following the channel for a while, it's probably no surprise. I'm going with concrete countertops. And I'm gonna go with a light gray concrete. I think that'll match the dark gray or black cabinets really well. Now I wanted really badly to go with white concrete countertops. And for those of you wondering, yes, you can get concrete to be gleaming white. I've got some old videos doing that. I've just never done it on countertops. I really wanted to do it, but concrete can stain a little bit easier than other materials. It's sort of like marble. I know myself, I'm kind of a mess. So I'm gonna go with gray just for functionality reasons. And I think it'll look pretty good too. So we got dark gray cabinets, light, medium gray, concrete countertops. All that could be a little bit cold and dark. So that brings us to the third material choice. You probably noticed there were a lot of wood features in my inspo picks, I'm gonna add in some wood accent features and a wood table on the island to really warm things up. And number four is the appliances. Basically, you got black, white, stainless steel. I'm personally a big fan of stainless steel appliances. Timeless, they don't go out of style, so that's the way we're going there. Number five, and this is really for the whole area, is the floors. I'm going to go with a lighter wood floor. It doesn't show fur, dust, anything like that maybe like a maple or a white oak. I also think that'll help balance out along with the wood features in the kitchen, the darker cabinets. So without further ado, let's actually dive in and look at the model. What the, not that, the, the model of the kitchen. <laughs> Coming up with the layout for the kitchen can also seem kind of overwhelming, but if you just start to think about how the kitchen is gonna work in the space that you're in, it kind of falls out from there. So in this space, over on that wall, we've got the stairs that lead up to the second floor from the first floor workshop. Behind me, this wall separates the living area from the bedrooms in the back. And over here, we've got an exterior wall. Behind you over that way is the front of the building. So with this space, it just makes sense to have an L-shaped kitchen running along the back wall here and the exterior wall. So it opens up into the living area sort of makes it all flow together really well. I also considered having a peninsula that extended the L shape off of the exterior wall and over in the middle here, but I actually had a peninsula layout at my old loft and I wasn't a big fan of only sort of having one entry and exit point. I like the way 
it sort of flows in a circle when you've got an island in the middle of the kitchen. So with the general layout of the L-shaped kitchen with island decided on, it was time to figure out how to lay out all the appliances with, within that design. This again can seem kind of overwhelming, but I did a little searching and there's something known as the kitchen work triangle. There's all kinds of crazy measurements that go with it, but essentially says that you need to have your cooking area, your cleaning area, and your food storage area arranged in a triangle so you can easily move between them in an unobstructed way. Oh, and one other factor before we go into that that's important, I'm gonna go with base cabinets only on this side. For purposes of the appliances, that means the refrigerator is gonna go on this back wall. I, I was gonna put it over here so that you could kinda access it easier as you're moving in and out of the living area. So we got the fridge here, now we gotta figure out where the cooktop and sink are gonna go. I looked at putting the cooktop here and kinda having it be a centerpiece with a really cool hood. One small problem with that, We've got an HVAC duct up here. There's no way to put a hood in above a cooktop here and vent it. So that means the cooktop is gonna go along the exterior wall with the sink. And I think it makes most sense to have the sink at the far end of the wall that will open up to the living area and have the cooktop towards the back, keeps the smells and the mess of cooking towards the back of the kitchen. So after I'd picked the locations of those appliances and the sink, everything else was pretty simple. I could basically just build the cabinets around those appliance locations. So let's come back to that idea I mentioned of having base cabinets only along the exterior wall here. If you noticed in my inspo pics, I had a lot of what they call one wall kitchens. I think they look really cool, clean and modern, and I've basically emulated a one wall kitchen design on the back wall here. But we've got an L shape. So by having the base cabinets only, no wall cabinets, at eye level, your eyes are just gonna be drawn to the full wall in the back, and I think it'll kind of maintain that look of a one wall kitchen, even though we've got an L shape. Also, it just kind of opens everything up and embraces the living area. I hope I sounded like I know what I'm talking about because I am not an actual interior designer. I just play one on YouTube. The location of the cabinets around the walls is pretty much set because HVAC, electrical, plumbing, all is happening in the next month. And once the lines are in for the appliances, you can't really change those locations. The island, I can change. I definitely like having a seating area at the island. I'm thinking of doing a sort of split level design where a wood top that's cantilevered out from the main island. For me, I, I eat there and I also do a lot of work on my laptop there. And having a normal dining table height is just better for me for both of those applications. I also wanna talk a little bit about the pantries. So for the pantries, I'm actually gonna do pull out pantries where it's sort of the full height and you access them from the side. I'm a really big fan of these pull out pantries. They just allow you to maximize storage space by going front to back with full access. Speaking of storage, I am a big fan of storing plates, bowls, stuff like that in drawers instead of cabinets like a lot of people do. You can access front to back of a drawer so much easier than you can with a wall cabinet. Things just like go there to die at the back of the cabinet in my experience. One other thing that I'm still deciding on is the oven. In this design, I have a built-in wall oven right over here. And I have a separate cooktop on this wall. The other option is doing a slide-in oven with a range top right here, all in one package. I think a wall oven like this looks super cool. It does cost a couple thousand dollars more to do separate wall oven and cooktop. So I'm trying to decide if that's worth it. It may or may not be once I work out the budget. So speaking of budget, since I'm making the countertops myself, making the cabinets myself, I'm gonna to try to keep this kitchen under 20 grand and still do it as like a top end kitchen. We'll see how that works out. It's an ambitious goal. One cost saving thing is that I'm pretty sure I'm gonna be going with a counter depth fridge that sort of looks like a built-in over a full built-in fridge. Built-in fridges are crazy expensive, eight, $9,000 and up. Whoever did the kitchen at my old loft put a sub-zero fridge in there. I looked it up, it was like an $11,000 fridge, nuts. And it broke twice in the five years I lived there. And it was $1,000 just to repair it every time it broke. So I'm definitely gonna save money there just go with a counter depth fridge. So that is what I hope will be my dream kitchen. I hope you guys dig it. I'm pretty excited, curious what you think. As for updates on the rest of the renovation, we got the permits a few weeks ago. Things have started moving really fast. 
almost all the HVAC ducts are in. We've got the plumbing in. We got electricians coming next week to wire the whole place. I'll be sharing the footage I've got of all the HVAC and plumbing with you shortly. We also redid the penthouse room above me, put new siding on that. So make sure you're subscribed to Bell to follow along with all that. Watch the rest of the videos in the abandoned building playlist if you haven't already. That's it for this time, and I will see you next time.